Melissa Novelli, co-founders of Pawtastic Friends, for another episode of the Paw Talk. Hey, guys. Hi. What's happening? What is happening? What's happening is we've got some fabulous dogs for you to tell us about in this episode. First up, we have Honey. Who wants to tell me about, and all of us, about Honey? I'll let my honey tell you about honey. <laughs> Love it. So Honey is a sweetheart who's new to the program. We met her a couple months ago at the boarding facility, and she has quickly stolen the hearts of all the volunteers. She's petite in size. She's a black pity. She was at a different boarding facility and just was not doing well. So they moved her over to where we walk and the volunteers get her out and she instantly came alive. Loves the volunteers. She loves to walk. She rides great in the car. She is just this amazing dog. When she gets to the enrichment training center, she's really becoming confident exercises. And she is just this sweet girl that deserves a chance. What sort of things does the trainer do? Do you guys work with her? Is she on the Puppuccino mafia crowd? Tell us a little bit about <laughs> what happens when she gets the, to the facility. We need to get some shirts to say Puppuccino <laughs> mafia, mafia crowd. crowd. Yeah, I like that. So when Honey comes to the center, it depends if it's a day that I'm there it's Puppuccino mania. And uh, she just loves it. As a matter of fact, one of the volunteers had stopped by last Tuesday with her and she messaged me, Melissa, if you're not too busy, can you bring out a Puppuccino? Sure enough, she called the right person. I brought it out and she just loved it. The trainer with Honey works on just basics, kind of refreshers. She's an A-plus student who's eager to learn. She loves, like I said, problem solving. So a lot of times they do puzzles or snuffle mats. Another great tool, and this is even a great tool for people to do at home, is nose work. And nose work is so simple. You can get little boxes out and you randomly throw treats in there. And what the dogs do is they sniff to find the treat. And we do it at home with Bentley. He, he loves it. And it keeps their mind sharp. It helps them with confidence building. And it's just really a great resource that's easy, not only to do with the rescue dogs, but also with dogs at home. And especially when it's hot outside and you can't really go outside with your dogs. Great way to burn up some energy. Who do we have next to talk about? Little Bryce, huh? the Spitfire, as Melissa calls them. <laughs> All right. Bryce is with yeah, with, probably like Bryce is probably like this big and he's a super cool looking dog. He's just a little feisty. So he's with our friends over at House of Second Chances and the founder always has an issue with him when he comes in. But as soon as he sees Melissa, our trainer, it's game on. He knows he's there for enrichment training. He loves her. He's just he's an absolute awesome dog. So we're hoping we can build some confidence with him because he's a little nipper. Sometimes the little dogs seem to be nippers but working on building his confidence and trusting people. So we don't want him getting in the house and then we have some biting issues, which so, that's easy to, that's easy to curtail. What kind of dog is he? What, you, what kind of mix is he? I in? want to say that he's got some Chihuahua, like long hair Chihuahua mix maybe. Yeah. He's a brown, white, just handsome little dude. He's yeah. just. And what I'd like to add real quick with Bryce Last Tuesday, we hosted an event for the students at Opportunity Village and their adults with learning disabilities. And we hosted them at the center to make dog scarves for the rescue dogs. And Bryce actually was training while they were there. And he was so interested and so calm when he saw the students that even the trainer pointed out like, wow, Melissa, it was like he was more interested in seeing them. He was sticking his nose underneath the <laughs> gate and stuff, but he was very in tune and almost calming with them as they were with him. I've know we had a dog that was like that, and Michelle's mother, for a variety of reasons, is ter terrified of dogs. And our dog, who was the most neurotic immediately went up to her and laid his head on her shoulder. Oh, wow. And he just knew. And no dog had ever done that to her. And she was terrified, but the dog got her through it. And the, so the, that taught me the intuition of dogs 
is something that can just be incredible. But I want to follow up on something that you both have said, both about honey and price, and that's building confidence. How can you tell that a dog either has lost confidence or has no confidence? And then how do you really help building confidence, maybe separate from building trust? Some dogs come into the center and they're just like sad, almost like a head held low, or they're just in there and they're just kind of lackadaisical. And that's why we have like things like the A-frame that teach them to go over the A-frame and like, hey, I did that. That was awesome. Or going through the shoots or going through the weed poles or just different things to build their confidence. And that's why we have all the enrichment training or having them do the puzzles and finding the treats. It might seem like simple things to us, but it makes a huge difference in their lives, helping them build that confidence and trust. A lot of dogs have been abused. So when our trainers give them the love or our volunteers give them the love and attention, they're like, Hey, okay. These are going to be all right. We see a lot of, we see a lot of abuse stories, unfortunately. In fact, on the news here, just the other day, somebody had 10 dogs in a car and two didn't make it. It's just, you have to educate people on don't leave the dogs in the car, especially when it's the summertime. I also, heartbreaking. I also think that building confidence, I think we're lucky because we have a bunch of encouragers. So Every time they do something, as we go through this day by day, I learn that it's little victories. Maybe a dog only puts his paw on the A-frame the first time he's there. It's the little victories and the encouraging words that cheer him on. Hey, good job, buddy. Good job. Next week, maybe he makes it halfway up. And then before you know it, the trainers are sending us videos and pictures like, oh my God, he went over the A-frame. So it's the little victories that are the big picture and win the war. So that brings us to our adopted dog. And I want to first say, since I know who it is, this is the first dog we've talked about in a prior episode who's been adopted since we started the Paw Talk podcast. So who can tell us about the success you had with Leon? Listen knows all about Leon. <laughs> she knows all about all the dogs. So Leon was a senior and he came to the boarding facility. He lived most of his life in a sanctuary, in a kennel, most likely outside, perhaps a little bit inside. When we met him, we were like, wow, he's got a lot of things. He's a senior. He's dark in color. A lot of people don't want to adopt adopt seniors. A lot of people don't want to adopt black dogs, which I don't quite understand because they're great. And this dog, I'm like, we got to get him to the center. He's a senior. I didn't, to be honest with you, I didn't care what he could do. I just wanted to get him there because I knew that this dog hadn't had much of a life before, a lot of contact with a lot of people. Yes, he was cared for, but I don't think he experienced the things that the volunteers and that the training center and that the rescue brought to him. The volunteers took him out. He'd love to go to the park. This was a dog that was also labeled an only dog. However, every Tuesday, Keith, our trainer, would take him to the park with Keith, our volunteer, and he and another dog, Finn, became best friends. This dog would go from barking at other dogs, Leon, and then he's walking side by side with Finn. They follow each other. And gradually he started to go with other dogs. And he just was an amazing dog. And then we got a call that somebody was interested in him, the rescue told us. And he is now living his best life with a mom who just adores him. And I think probably she means as much to him as he means to her. And uh, we couldn't be happier. Every time we see a senior get adopted, it's amazing. But to see a senior that lived most of his life in a sanctuary and hadn't had much, much exposure to the outside world makes it even sweeter. That's great. That's great. I remember you talking about him, hoping he would be adopted. And here we've had a great I'm going to say weave because I got to learn about it before. So that's great. Now let's turn to the tip. And this month it's Satan has outsourced some of his heat to us. So we're talking about dogs and heat. And last week on our last episode, we talked about the signs of a heat stroke. 
And I wanted to ask you, maybe, Michael, if you see a dog that's had a heat stroke or your dog has one, are there things that you as the pet owner or a sister can do short of maybe taking him to an emergency vet clinic? Yeah, you have to be very careful with that. Like a lot of people, like even when we get overheated, you're not supposed to throw cold water on your face or on your head. How we render aid to an overheated dog or other animal, it can make a difference in their outcome. Please be properly informed. Do not pour cold water on them when they're overheated or place a wet towel on their back because they may cause the veins to contract and then you have even more issues. High temperatures cause blood proteins to clot, which thickens the blood. And there's so many just different things. You have to be really careful. The number one thing is don't bring the dogs out when it's hot. In fact, today where I work in the forum shops, there were some ladies out there with three little dogs. I'm like, please don't tell me they're walking these dogs out here in the heat. And I ended up talking to them and they were just taking the dogs window shopping. The other day at Sprouts, a lady was out with her dog all in her arm. I'm like, leave your dogs at home. They'll be fine for an hour or two. You don't need to take your dogs everywhere, especially when it's hot, because one bad instance of you taking your dog out could be fatal. It could be really fatal. I, right before we got on the podcast, too, uh, one of the ladies, she had her little Frenchie out there in the pool. And then somebody below said he took his dog for a 20-minute walk and he lost them. He overheated. There's mm. no reason to take your dogs out in the heat. There's no reason. They're fine in the air conditioning. Leave them there. Leave the TV on. You'll see them when you get home in an hour. Well, that brings us up to the end of our time. We have a QR code on the YouTube version of this podcast. So hopefully if our listeners wanted any more information, but if they're listening to this and not seeing this, what would be the best place for them to find out more about Potastic Friends? We always encourage people to go to our website and help out. We are a nonprofit organization, so they can go to potasticfriends.com. If you'd like to see all the wonderful videos of other dogs that are currently training or some of the dogs that have been adopted, you can go to Facebook and Instagram. It's Potastic Friends on Facebook and Potastic Friends LV on Instagram. Guys, it's been great. I look forward to continuing this conversation. Tom, thank you for everything. Thank you. We greatly appreciate it. All right.